I have been saying for some time that the next big bubble is going to burst, although they're reinflating the housing bubble now and, and the stock market bubble is at an all-time high. But uh, that the next big bubble that I think might burst could be the student loan bubble. A trillion dollars in student loans. Something that pretty much never existed in the history of this country. You've got an entire generation that is starting their lives as indentured servants, uh, functionally. Many of them believe they can't afford to get married. Actually, many of them probably can't afford to get married, although I would, I would submit, speaking as somebody who got married at a fairly young age, that, you know, you can work that through. But having children, well, that's a tough one. Although that's some kind of, sometimes the uh, unintended consequence of getting married, or even not, but still. But perhaps more important, the major way that the middle class in the United States builds wealth is by owning homes. When my dad died back in 2006, his house had been paid off for nearly a decade. That was his wealth. I mean, it wasn't a lot. I think, I think my brother sold that house for around eighty or ninety thousand dollars. But that, you know, compared to my dad bought it for thirteen thousand back in the fifties, so pretty good deal. But that, you know, that was his wealth. The, the, that you could build wealth by buying a house when you were young. And my dad bought that house, and it was the second house, by the way, that he owned. The first house that he had owned was considerably smaller. I still remember it. It was when I was much smaller. But he was able to do that because my dad, you know, he joined the army during World War II. It ended by the time he got out of boot camp, so he went off to Japan as part of the occupation forces. But when he came back, he was eligible for the GI Bill, thanks to Franklin Roosevelt and the continuation of that by Harry Truman and Dwight Eisenhower. And, and so he was able to go to college and even get a stipend. He was paid to go to college. And when he dropped out of college, because my mom got pregnant with me, and he went to work in a steel mill, and he was looking for, uh, for a house to buy, the, the federal government was backstopping homes. The, the, you had the, the vet, you know, as one of the veterans' benefits, they would help you buy a house. And he did. Now, if he had had fifty or 100000 or even five or $10,000 in student loan debt, he probably wouldn't have been able to come up with a down payment for the house. He might not have been credit, wor credit worthy for it. Well, I, you know, I'm using my dad's example. I, I'd say probably, you know, I don't know the percentage, three quarters, half, some, a large chunk of the, quote, wealth that Louise and I have is because, you know, we started buying our own houses. Now, of course, the bank owned them for the first three quarters of our married life, but over time, equity built and built and built, and we started buying our own houses in our late 20s. And now we own our houses, and that's a good chunk of our wealth. And we were able to do that because neither one of us had student loan debt. So what you basically have Jeez. is an entire generation of young people who can't even begin the process of building the wealth that would allow them to have a decent retirement or allow them to have a buffer against, you know, some, some assets against which they could borrow if they have rough times, if they lose their job, if somebody gets sick. This used to be fundamentally and frankly the core of the middle class. And President Obama said, you know, student loan rate, it's only 3.4%. Let's uh, keep it there. But Republicans in Congress said, no, we're going to let it double. So it's now 6.8%. It doubled. And on top of that, you've got over a trillion dollars in student loan. This is insane. Now, Oregon and New Jersey are trying to do something about it. They're putting, putting into place you know, legislation, or they're, they're attempting to put into place legislation, where basically you can go to the state schools for, for free to very little. You, you, earn, you earn, you accrue, you run up some debt, but you can pay that debt off in a variety of ways if you stay in the state and you're working in particular industries. And, you know, I mean, the laws vary and they're still being negotiated, but... 
Why even that? You know, before Ronnie Reagan became governor, California's education was free. Abraham Lincoln took millions of acres of public land and gave it away to establish over 50 land-grant colleges in, ver- in, in virtually all the states where the state had enough land for that college that they could work that land, whether it was a farm or whether it was lumber or whatever it was, and earn enough money from that land that they could offer free tuition to the citizens of their state. And they did. If you want to go back farther than Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson was so proud of the fact that he was the founder of the University of Virginia, America's first free college. That when he designed his tombstone, and he wrote his own, and he designed the the graphics for his own tombstone, the words that he put on there was that he was the the author of the Virginia Declaration of Religious Liberties, the author of the Declaration of Independence, and the founder of the University of Virginia. This is a guy who was president of the United States twice, who was secretary of state. None of that stuff was as important as the fact that he started a free college. This is mind-boggling. And I am predicting that at some point, this generation of 20-somethings and 30-somethings who have been saddled with this debt as a consequence of 30 years of Reaganomics, Reagan's war, I mean, you know, everybody, everybody knows about Reagan's war on working people, on unions and on, you know, on the, the, the minimum wage and all that kind of thing. Less well-known is Reagan's war on young people. When he became governor of California, the University of California system was free. And he called the young people who were out in the streets demonstrating against the Vietnam War punks. And said, why should, why should I have to pay with my taxes for them to go out and demonstrate my policies? And he began the dismantling of free college education in California as governor and in the United States as president. Those of you in your 20s and 30s and even 40s listening to this program may be hard to believe, but back in the 50s and 60s and 70s in the United States, back before the Reagan presidency, if you had the the brain power to go to college or the brain power and the inclination to go to good trade school, the unions provided uh, apprenticeships and, and trade schools for free. You could get the kind of education you needed. So anyhow, I I, I find that absolutely mind-boggling. When the two states, Oregon and New Jersey, even need to do this. Meanwhile, the Koch brothers are running ads saying, Obamacare is going to take away your choice of doctor. Eh, really? No, it's not in the law. And the Chicago Fed... Remember back in 2013 in Obama's State of the Union, earlier this year in the Obama's State of the Union address, he said, let's raise the minimum wage to $9 an hour, which is a dollar below where it would be if you just inflation adjusted from the 60s, the minimum wage. He said, let's raise it to $9 an hour. The Chicago Fed that says that would increase total household spending $50 billion the next year. Huge stimulus. Republicans aren't going to allow that. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Nope, they want the economy to be as bad as it can as long as you've got a Democratic president in the White House, particularly this Democratic president. 